How do? Are you finding that your saws are just taking a little bit more effort than they should do to cut some wood? They might want to sharpen. Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome to King Bespoke Creations. Yes, saws need sharpening too, as well as the chisels and the planes and everything else. Saws do need a sharpening. Depending on what kind of saw you have. If you went to your local hardware store and bought something like this with a plastic handle, chances are it's got hardened teeth. Now you can tell because they're a different colour. They've got that kind of darkness to them. There's a slight rainbow edging where they leave the teeth onto the actual metal of the saw itself. Uh, they are hardened teeth. You cannot sharpen those. They will just wear your file away because they're as hard as the files are. Um, so these do stay sharp for longer. I can't get my teeth in today. They do stay sharp for longer. Uh, but once they go blunt, that's it. They're pretty much scrapped from there. Um, you could cut out sections of this metal and use it as a scraper. Top tip. If, however, you have saws generally with wooden handles, yes, I'm massively oversimplifying this plastic handle versus wooden handle, but generally that's the case. Uh, we have teeth along here that can be sharpened. The strength of this metal is the same all the way through. Nothing special done at the ends. So with lots of different saws that I have, including this special little beauty, look at this. Look at this, a KBC special with some beautiful checkering on that handle as well. Isn't that gorgeous? That was sent to be by the new Yankee gunman. Uh, go and check them out over on Instagram. While you're there, give me a like while you're on. Now, generally speaking, with these saws that we can sharpen, uh, there are two different types. There are cross-cut saws and rip-cut saws, okay? They all get sharpened with the same tools, and those tools are just a cheap set of small files. Um, I literally paid four or five pounds at the most for these. Uh, small little needle files, that's all we need. Doesn't have to be anything particularly fancy. Uh, we're gonna go through the technique in a second. But these two different types of saws um, will be sharpened in different ways. So this is a rip cut saw. These are really easy to sharpen because everything runs perfectly straight. So we sharpen 90 degrees to the blade and each of those teeth goes straight up and then angles, straight up and angles. Very, very simple and we'll do that one first because it's the easy one. A rip cut saw is a little bit trickier um, because the angles this way might be different, but also we sharpen them going across the blade at that angle, alternating as we go. So these slice through the fibers of the wood rather than push through like a rip cut does. Rip cut blades uh, work in a very similar way to a chisel. That's basically how it works. Whereas these actually slice the way through the fibers uh, for a cross cut. Let's grab one more item that we're going to need to sharpen these saws. So the other crucial piece of toolage that we need is a scrap of wood. Now what this is gonna do, we're just gonna put a split down most of this. We'll keep it connected at one end. Uh, and then the blade itself will slot in between. And this is what gets clamped in the vise. So here we go, so this is the rip cut saw first. Uh, I'm just gonna slide that black like saw. So. And then pop that in the vise. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna give a real good hold all the way through here. Nice and tight. So when we're going backwards and forwards with the files on here, this isn't bouncing, vibrating. You can tell when it does, because it sounds horrific. Right, so take a seat, find yourself a comfortable spot, and I'm using a triangular file here. Okay, uh, and all it takes with this rip cut is keeping the file 90 degrees to the blade, uh, level that way on as well, and literally, That's one bit, that's one tooth done. Done. 
done. So you can see the, the profile of the teeth here. Um, each of these cutting edges is 90 degrees straight up. And then the trailing edge, I'm sure there's arguments they have a perfect angle. But whatever my triangular file is, that'll do. And that's one saw done. So that rib cut took me a minute, literally, uh, kind of four strokes of the file for every tooth. <laughs> and so on and so on and so on. Right, now let's have a look at the cross cut teeth. So with a rib cut saw, you can actually see when we look closely from the top, that these teeth are slightly angled. So that one's pointing that way. That points this way, that points that way, that points that way, and they alternate all the way through. This is to make the kerf or the cut in the wood that little bit wider so your saw blade runs through without a great deal of friction. Now it also then gives us a gap. So we can see here there's, there's a diagonal line running in between the teeth in that direction, and then on the other side of the teeth that diagonal line is running in that direction and that allows us to get the file in between and do both sides at the same time so just using the same triangular file I'm going in here cutting and then I'm going to miss a tooth so that I'm just filing in the same direction miss a tooth So once we've gone all the way along with the file at this angle, it's literally just going through there and going through all of those alternate teeth that we haven't done. And you can clearly see the teeth that have been cleaned versus the teeth that have not. Now I know this is a blackened blade, but even a normal saw that's not blackened will still have some oxidization and have some dullness to that metal. So as soon as you've freshly sharpened one set of those teeth, you'll clearly see which ones you've done and which ones you haven't. So it becomes a simple measure of changing the angle to the opposite direction and running through all the teeth again. And I can feel just putting my fingers on the top that is so much more sharper -er than it was before. I suppose the last thing is just to try it through some wood then, isn't it? And then the crosscut saw. Very, very little effort. And that's what we want. We don't want to be pushing the saw through the wood every time. If we're finding we're doing that, your saw's probably a bit blunt. As with all other tools that have a sharp edge on them, it shouldn't take any great effort. Just a nice push through, let the saw do the cutting rather than you having to push down. Uh, if you want a little bit more tension, it's literally finger, little finger, pulling back on here. But that is a lovely cut. And there we go. So with one triangular file and a block of wood with a slit in it, we can sharpen any saw. Uh, so we can take something that uh, doesn't cut particularly well um, to something that's, that takes little effort. And that's why sharpening is really important because the more effort you have to put through, the more likely you're gonna make a mistake. It's gonna bounce, chip, bend, snap something it's going to get ugly very very quickly so there we go one sharpened tool now if you're in a sharpening mood make sure you check out this video here because it's very very useful and until next time sharpen all of your tools and i'll see you soon god bless <laughs>